update. Increase radius. Fantastic. I like this Microsoft Scene Understanding SDK. Welcome, LinkedIn, this morning. I finally had this working after about a month and a half of messing around in Unity and Visual Studio. There's a bunch of different bugs, but oh my goodness, it's working and how fantastic it is. Now this, the main uh, implementation for this, uh, especially within spatial computing, is, is always revolving around uh, having the AI machine learning algorithm understanding these edges, understanding its environment, understanding the semantic spatial mesh that comes back and all the individual edges that you see for these systems. So we want to know if that is a wall, if that's a chair, if that's a ceiling, and all of the different types of objects that this runtime can detect like floors, et cetera, et cetera. Now this is computational heavy. It takes quite a bit of, uh, of, of computational modeling and bandwidth to process this. Larger rooms take up to one to 10 minutes. Again, you can just see this small hallway that I kind of set up and it keeps, that runtime will keep updating every one minute and you can change that refresh rate. And there's a bunch of different options here that you have in there, Welcome SDK. This is the sample application from one, you can toggle the seams, you can, you can put the uh, scene mesh mode or the wireframe mode out there. You, you can toggle the background. You can also, as, as I already uh, stated, you can increase the radius, or decrease the radius, but more importantly, you can save the data. So you can use this as a computer vision system to go out there and track and record 3D environments, 3D objects, and, and save these volumetric captures. And then, then you can upload them to the SDK and you can manipulate them. They're really, really fun. We'll see if we can get into that after with a little bit of coding in the C script. Um, but thank you guys so much for paying attention to this. And if you have any questions, let me know. Again, I will endeavor to go through uh, in the second part of this video to show you guys all the individual bugs and areas that I had issues with um, when attempting conf to configure the Windows Mixed Reality Toolkit and a lot of the DLLs and the runtimes that are required for this, at this sample application. And again, this to me is one of the biggest and most important implementations in spatial computing. As we go forward, the, the edge computational bandwidth requirements and latency will be reduced so you won't be seeing uh, such a, a lag when you're uh, attempting to uh, overlay uh, information uh, in real time on semantic edges and, and volumetric, um, you know, uh, different databases that you're going out there capturing with different types of sensors or photogrammetry or V-cell or TOF or again with the Azure V4 system. Let's jump into the second part of this video and we'll go into Unity and how I set this up. Thank you so much. Hello and welcome back LinkedIn. Let's briefly review the Scene Understanding SDK for the Microsoft HoloLens 2.0. Now, most spatial computers are constantly integrating information and capturing information about what it sees in your environment. And then we need to funnel all of that data uh, and we need to produce a single coherent abstraction uh, of the volumetric capture in your environment. Now, the major purpose for this specific SDK and the API and the runtime is to transform that unstructured environmental sensor data um, and then convert it into a powerful abstract representation of your entire environment. Essentially, very simply put, that as, as the camera system looks out, the spatial computer, as it looks at all the edges, all the flat um, surfaces, all the edges along a wall, and, and it, it actually goes out and sees a chair, it looks at the ceiling, as you can kind of look around here, this is going to help us exponentially because we can store all of this information just like Apple's going to use in the QR code for the iGlass system. Uh, the, Google's probably going to do the same thing with AR Core and various other companies out there are all integrating something like this because it's computationally inefficient to try to uh, remap every environment every single time a new user comes into an, uh, an existing location that is probably traversed hundreds of thousands of times a day or per week or per month. Now, the process of converting this raw sensor data into a scene, as you saw in that first sample, is, is extremely slow and it's potentially computationally expensive as an operation. It, takes, it can take a few seconds for a 10 by 10 medium space, or it can take up to you know, five, six minutes for something 50 by 50 or 100 by 100 meters. You need to pay very close attention to that as you move forward and try to integrate this into your applications. Now, I did have a few issues 
setting this up. There are bugs in the system, but just so you know and you're aware, there are a few applications and, and I, I think uh, steps that we're going to take to, to properly set this up. Now, what you need to do is the, the scene SDK version that I have here is 0.5.2069. The Unity version is 2019.2.21F1. I have 2019 Visual Studio Code updated as of this morning, November 4th, 2020. Um, and then the scene under, understanding SDK also requires uh, NuGet. You can update that right in Unity and just download and install the, the latest uh, revisions. And then the, the Windows SDK version 18362. Now, I've actually built this for you guys. So you just send me a message if you have a HoloLens 2, and I'll send you the application that you can use the device portal for to just upload the application and it'll be running for you. You'll have the whole, um, uh, the little sample app that they have uh, with this SDK and I can send that to you guys. Just send me a message here on LinkedIn uh, or, or send me a private message, a DM, uh, wh whatever's easier for you. Now, a few of the issues that I had, uh, number one was a missing DLL uh, in the system, but also you've got to remember here, follow the steps very strictly from the Microsoft website, especially when they're talking about uh, the DLLs and updating the NuGet packages. Because if you don't do that, when you export it out to Visual Studio and it tries to build and compile the application, most likely you'll be missing one of the DLLs that I was missing for weeks. And then I went back and actually just reset everything, reinstalled everything, um, and then I was able to identify where the problem actually was in the system for me personally. So when you come into the build settings, um, there's go to the player settings and go all the way down to the bottom where the XR settings are. Now the error for me was caused because the uh, WSA holographing remote supported checkbox was checked. When I unchecked that box, my error went away and I could build it out. So I hope that helps you guys. Again, I use the device portal. Once you build it out from Unity uh, and build your packages for your SLN, and then you send it out to Visual Studio, you build the package from there, you're going to publish it, and then you're going to output it to a, a, an application that you can upload directly to the device portal. Uh, you can also use uh, your IP address to do like a, a remote install. I have issues with that, with the lag sometimes, so I don't recommend it. Uh, but I, I would definitely recommend uh, using the, the SLN structure there and also using the publish via the device portal. If you have issues and you can't build it, send me a message. I'll send you the application and I'll even help you upload it today. Thank you guys so much for paying attention and tuning in to this channel. Uh, you know, it means a lot to me personally and professionally. I'm always trying to learn as much as I can from so many other thought leaders out there in the world from Microsoft and Google and Apple and Intel and Facebook, so many brilliant people. And I feel blessed every single day to not be the smartest guy in any room I ever go in. Uh, and that's something that I actively pursue and seek out. And I think you guys should all do the same thing because it'll help our entire community and the platform exponentially. And you have a lot of different people out there improving different things like Eric Preventure, the Mixed Reality Toolkit. He's done some amazing, exceptional things in, in hand tracking for the Oculus Quest, which can be ported over the HoloLens 2, uh, and, and so many other people out there, developers. Uh, I, I, I salute you guys all, man. I, I really do. You, you've helped me uh, over the last three or four years improve my skill sets and also help me uh, understand how I can better share this information on this platform. God bless you all, and have a wonderful day.